Hi, everybody, and welcome again to Z Code Sports System. Here, we developed an automated system to help you win big. It doesn't matter what sport you're betting on, we have everything for you right here. So, we're going to take a look here at some games for Major League Baseball. But before we do, I want to invite you to join so you have access to this Z Code VIP Club section here. And you see it has all these tabs here with a bunch of different tools to help you make your picks. Okay, so let's take a look at, at five of these. And we'll go over a bunch of charts here that will help you. Okay, so here we have Los Angeles and Tampa Bay. If you see Los Angeles is average down there, three and three over the last six, and Tampa Bay is average up four and two over their last six. Um, if you look at the over under, you can see that both teams have been involved in games over the line in general, nine out of the last 12 between the two teams. Um, the score predictor has Tampa Bay by a seven to three score and a pretty nice level of confidence in prediction of 64%. If you take a look at the power ranks indicator chart, you can see Los Angeles was even for a couple of days and they have climbed up where you can see the upward line going up to plus 28 and Tampa Bay has met them at plus 28 right here on May the 25th. So both teams are at plus 28. Um, Gavin Stone is scheduled to pitch for the Dodgers. He has a very high ERA of 10.13, but a low sample size and he's actually been a positive bet at plus $233. If we take a look at the volatility oscillator, the stability factor, notice that Tampa has been one of the most stable teams in the league at plus 21. They have been at 21 since uh, May the 12th. They dipped a little bit and they're back to 21. So not as stable over the last like week and a half or so, but overall one of the most stable teams in the league. So in the end, I like the Rays in a home game but going over the line. So the next game we want to look at is Go down through the list of contests here. We have a lot of games here set for uh, this day, which is the 28th. So here's going to be the Chicago White Sox and the Detroit Tigers. In this AL Central battle, you can see that Chicago's coming in burning hot, while Detroit's coming in averaged. If you look at the um, the streak here, five and one over the last six for Chicago, and uh, let's see Detroit here. Let's see what are they? Three and three over their last six. If you look at the over-under, though, despite being uh, winning a bunch of games, you can see that the total has been under in the last six for Chicago. And that means that they've been a lot of pitching matchups, very good pitching to uh, help them uh, win their games. And Detroit, on the other hand, has been involved in games mostly over the line, four out of their last six. Um, the pitching matchup, you see Dylan Cease for Chicago, an ERA of 4.6. But a positive 53 on the pitcher profit oscillator. But you see Rodriguez is at 2.19 and uh, a negative 21. So you can see one is a slightly good bet and one is a slightly poor bet. On the power ranks indicator, you can see both teams are down pretty low, actually. Uh, Detroit is at 6. They dropped from 10 down to 6. Chicago increased from 3 up to 5. If you take a look at the volatility oscillator, the stability factor, Chicago has been the more consistent team with regard to their favorite underdog stats at plus 12, while Detroit was as high as plus 7. Back on May the 2nd for the rest of this month, they have not been very consistent, and they are now at uh, plus 2. So in the end, as far as the bet goes, I think this is a Chicago game on their own, but the go under the line. St. Louis and Cleveland, here's another matchup to take a look at. St. Louis is coming in average down. They're three and three over the last six. While Cleveland is just one and five over their last six and losers over their last two. If you take a look at the uh, over under five games in a row over for St. Louis and three games in a row under for Cleveland, so trending on opposite sides of the line. The score predictor has St. Louis by a five to three margin with a pretty nice level of confidence of 69%. We take a look at a power ranks indicator chart. Both teams on an up and downward uh, trend. St. Louis now on a downward trend from plus nine, or plus twelve down to plus nine. Cleveland on a downward trend also from plus six down to plus three. Uh, neither team has named their starting pitcher as of yet, so we can't really take a look at that. We we can look at is the volatility oscillator again, the stability factor, and look at this. Neither team has been consistent at all. In fact, both on a uh, downward trend in that category. St. Louis was at plus five back on April the 30th, and they've been very inconsistent since then. And see, Cleveland was 
and plus one, they haven't really moved too much, but still they have gone down from plus one to zero. Actually minus one, they went down to minus one. So in the end here, I like the Cardinals on the road, but I would pass on the over under. Okay, the next game we want to look at, there's a couple more here. We're scrolling down through. It's a large set of games that you see. Plenty of games to look at. Next one we want to look at is New York Mets in Colorado. Um, average for New York, losers of the last two, but you can see four and two over the last six. Colorado, if you look at their trend, two and four over the last six. Um, uh, actually, the Mets are four and two over the last six. I think I said two and four. Anyway, they're four and two, and Colorado two and four, and ice cold down. Uh, Taylor McGill is at the pitch for the Mets. You can see his record, 5-3, 4.32 ERA, and a pretty good bet at plus 100. If you take a look at the score predictor, uh, New York 6, Colorado 4, with about 56% confidence. If you look at the over-under, although Colorado has been under in two of the last three, they've been involved in games over in four out of the last six, and four out of the last five over for New York. On the power ranks indicator, New York was at 21. You see they dipped just over the last couple of days down to 16, and also a dip seen in Colorado from plus 9 down to plus 3. So what I like about this one is the Mets. I don't see how Colorado is going to do much. I like the Mets in this one in a high-scoring game. Okay, the last one we want to look at, if you go down here to the near the bottom of the list of games, Philadelphia and Atlanta in this NL East battle. Both teams coming in three and three over the last six. Both teams average status. And uh, both teams have been involved in games over the line four out of their last six. So a lot of similarities between the two teams as of late. Uh, the score predictor likes Atlanta by a five to four margin. You can see it's 53% confidence. If you look at that chart, let's take a look at this chart here, the power ranks indicator chart. You can see a steady downward line for Atlanta from plus 23 down to plus, or plus 25 down to plus 23. Philadelphia on a steady downward decline from 11 down to 7. Head to head, the teams have not yet met this season. This will be the first series between these two NL East rivals. Um, the stability factor, you see that Atlanta is at plus 10, Philadelphia at plus 3. Atlanta has been more stable, although lately not as stable. Philadelphia has been up and down in the stability factor, never really being very consistent all year with regard to their favorite underdog status. Um, I like Atlanta at home, but I will pass on the over-under. So there you have it. Those are the five games we want to look at for MLB for uh, May 28th. Happy betting, and we will see you next time.